Welcome back and thank you for your continued interest. We are in step four, the displacer cylinder assembly, making the piston cylinder and displacer shaft for the Phoenix engine. What we're gonna do now is uh, make the uh, piston cylinder and the shaft for the displacer. Also, while that glue is setting up, I'm gonna bake this on my hot plate a little bit. And they typically smoke a bit when, at first when they uh, run. I'm going to try and get that out of the way before it's all assembled, otherwise it gums up the uh, piston and displacer shaft. The piston cylinder is going to be made out of a half inch tube. I'm going to cut it at about an inch. Just mark it off. It's important that when you cut it, you don't deform the tube at all, because you want it to nest nice and smoothly with the piston. If you cut the tube with a, like a tube cutter, it pinches it, warps the tube, and the piston will not move freely. Before I cut it, I'm going to kind of just clean off the edge a little bit. It's easier to do when it's longer. Only one side uh, needs to be clean because the other side is going to be glued down to the cylinder. You could also solder it, but Trying to keep things simple with this engine, I'm going to use uh, some high temp epoxy. So clean that up a bit, see if it nests. This is the tube we'll be making the piston out of. I decided it would be a good idea to pre-bake the displacer. This is because the first time you run the engine, the displacer tends to smoke a bit. The smoke then gums up the piston and the displacer shaft. Here's the displacer after baking. It uh, baked a bit more than I wanted it to. Uh, had the burner on high for about 20 minutes. As you can see it's discolored uh, quite a bit on the bottom. Produced quite a bit of smoke so it won't be smoking later in the engine anyway. Uh, the shaft is pretty gummed up right here. I'll have to sand that off. But that. Uh, that is what I was shooting for, I guess. Um, this displacer was made out of the matte paper. I may redo it, make it out of the cotton paper. A lot of times I'll use a bandsaw to cut the tubes. It tends to cut them real quick without deforming the, uh, the shape. Sand that off a little, we'll be good to go. Alright, the displacer shaft I'm going to cut off pretty much the same way. I have um, a mark on here somewhere. I'm going to cut. There it is. Displacer shaft. I made a small wooden circle that I inserted the displacer shaft into. It's pretty tight in there. With friction itself should hold it in place. It will glue that in place on there with the epoxy. That's enough to stuck enough through to help center it. Um, you want to make sure it slides easy on the shaft. If there's any catching, just take like. Um, this is supposed to be 600 grit sandpaper. I make smooth, straight up motions. If you sand circular, actually, like we did in an earlier video, it can kind of grip this a little bit. But uh, you can see it's very smooth on there. All right. Piston. Cylinder. Um, it's slightly off square. I made a uh, mark on it indicating that it's um, which way it is square by turning it around with a, with a square on the edge um, because it can tolerate being a little off side to side from looking straight on but not front to back. So I'm just going to line that mark up forward when I glue it down. And uh, I'll go like that. I'm scoring the 
a little sandpaper, just scoring the spots where I'm going to glue. Trying not to make too many scratches outside the area where I'm gluing. Also, kind of scar around the bottom of the piston cylinder. Build a band of epoxy around it. And we're going to just kind of set it in place. Gravity will kind of take care of. Takes, take your time, line it up. Shave it in place. Build the epoxy up around the base of it. To have a good hold up. Obviously, I need to clean up a little bit there, but you get the idea. Alright, uh, that's what it's going to look like. That needs to set up overnight, so it'll be a little bit before I do the next part. I'm going to glue the cylinder to the bottom, or glue it to the top actually. First, we're going to score up the top a little bit, especially around where the cylinder is going to go, so try to get it to stick a little better. So, Got it scratched up good. Built a little stand so I can have it upside down. I'm going to set the cylinder on there once we get some high temperature silicone on it. Just going to go around the top lip. Okay. Once you get enough on there, I'm just going to set it centered as best we can. Right on here. I put the displacer in to help line it up. I gotta get it out of there, but um, I don't press. I don't press the top down because. Um, I don't want to squeeze all the sealant out. I needed to help keep a seal. And if you squeeze it, it pushes it all out, and then it's just going to be glass against copper. As you can see, there's some excess that's squeezed out on the inside. And I'll clean that up with a knife when I'm done, just so it doesn't interfere with the displacer movement. Um, once it's dry, your displacer in. Make sure everything's clear. It doesn't catch on any. If it does, go in there and trim it off with a knife. Get the cock on there. I'm actually going to put it down with a piece of wax paper in between. That way I'll be able to take the bottom off to you know, service it as needed, replace the displacer, maybe try different displacer combinations for uh, performance and such. Let your um, high temp silicone set up a little bit before putting it down. Okay, while that sets up, I'm going to put a little mark on this indicating which side goes forward on the base. That way, if there was any shape differences in this, can always make sure that that's nesting together in the same direction. Uh, so, uh, there's any knife, and I'll just put a mark right there. Just, just enough to know. Once it's set up, you simply take off the wax paper. You have a nice gasket on the bottom that will line up nicely with the 
contours of you know, ideally the bottom piece is completely flat but sometimes you get a little warp in there so if you keep it all lined up like you marked it it will uh, make a perfect seal um, I had the idea to pre-bake the displacer because when they heat up in the engine the very first time the glues and stuff burn off a lot of smoke I <laughs> baked the displacer a little too much on, on high in the hot plate so I did make a, another one that I'll try and do the same thing with but to a little lesser extent however this one definitely isn't going to smoke so I might still use it to secure the top to the bottom I've uh, got some springs they're actually made from springs that were slightly longer that I shortened to uh, accommodate the height of the engine once the springs are attached it looks a little something like this I'll probably take a couple more loops out of the springs I want it a little tighter than it is right now you get the idea This concludes step four. Once again, thanks for watching.